Put it up, put it up. Oh, <laughs> welcome to the show. What do you know, Joe? What great audience you got Yeah, here. <laughs> huge audience. <laughs> Studio going. We got our DJ in the house. What's up, everyone? The second best looking DJ I have on this podcast. The other one's my wife. She couldn't make it, but I want to introduce. I'll take that. You want to meet, just say the City Ralph? Is that what we're going to do? City Ralph, the City the Ralph. The sure. City Ralph. What's up, everyone? What's up? That's his Instagram handle. So if you're looking for him. Excited to be here. All right. All right. Hey, what do you know, Joe? <laughs> what do you know, Joe? Trooper Joe. That's it. What's going on, bro? Welcome <laughs> to the to podcast. See, Thank you so much, Nick, for having me here. Great, man. Looking forward to it. We are continuing yes, this campaign. Mm -hmm. We're having on uh, Miami-Dade Sheriff candidates coming on. It's a historic, historic year. First time in over 65 years that they're gonna, there's going to be an elected sheriff. Very important election. Very important election. So we have a very important person here sitting in front of me. We got Joe Sanchez. <laughs> the Thank famous you. Joe. Well, I don't know about famous. Sanchez. <laughs> Is it just Joe? Joe, yes. It's Joe Sanchez. That's just what Joe. everybody knows me for. for right. 40 years of uh, this community, and people know me by either Trooper Joe or Commissioner uh, Sanchez, but it's Joe. Joe Sanchez. Joe. Yeah. All right. So, this is what I want to do today is going to be, um, I want to give you some questions later on in the sure. podcast. Kind of like uh, tabletop exercises, some scenarios that's been going on around the nation, some stuff that's happened locally. So, I'm going to give you some um, scenarios and then you're going to go ahead and give me your response and how you would handle it when elected sheriff of Miami-Dade, right? But before we do that, I want to get to know you, Joe. Well, you know, listen, um, I came out of the service. Mm -hmm. I was in the Army, came out, and I applied with the Florida High Patrol, got hired with the Florida High Patrol, or I was blessed. I've been on, with the Florida High Patrol on and off for about 36 years. And when I say on and off, it's because, you know, I had a separation from the department when I was elected as a city commissioner. But, you know, in the department in itself, uh, I've been blessed to be with the Florida High Patrol, which is a, an incredible department. Mm. Um, it's given me a lot of experience, and it's it really prepared me for this role that I'm going to accept as uh, probably the next uh, sheriff if, if the people uh, give me that, uh, that, that, that blessing. Um, you know, I've been with the department for 36 years. I've had just about every specialty position you could have. I've been blessed to supervise the uh, public information department, uh, the lieutenant governor's uh, security detail. I did that, the dignitary protection uh, but also with the department itself, I've had just about every specialty position. I was instructor, FTO. I even went through a city memory SWAT school with a member of the Florida High Patrol SWAT school. Um, but the last 15 years of the department was the face of South Florida as the public information office. Now Camacho has taken over Lieutenant Camacho, which is... Shout out to my uh, boy, Camacho. Uh, my boy, I, I'm telling you, <laughs> yeah. I was blessed to, to have him come on board. He's, uh, he's the future of the Florida High Patrol. And uh, he's a dear friend of mine, and I'm glad that I have uh, played a small part in being maybe a mentor to him. Uh, the experience that I also bring to on the table today is, you know, the next sheriff has to have a variety of experiences. It just cannot be that he's a police officer and he's operational. You know, he's got to bring a variety of experiences. You know, I was blessed to be elected the vice president of the Florida PBA when I represented the Florida High Patrol. So I have that experience of negotiating contracts, um, disputes, uh, grievances, going to Tallahassee and lobby on behalf of the troopers. Uh, and that, that experience gave me a lot to, to decide to, one day, decide to run for public office, which I did. And I ran and I got elected. So I got elected in the city of Miami in 1998. Um, and there I, I was blessed to represent District 3, where I represented it for 11 years. And, you know, when you're an elected official for a city that has a half a million dollar budget, 20-something departments, you know, it's a great responsibility, but responsibility comes experience. You know, I have been blessed to uh, approve 11 balanced budgets, which is required by the state of Florida, so I know about budgets. I can review budgets. I can uh, vote a budget up or down. I've also hired directors and fired directors. I was blessed to have the opportunity to hire John Timoney when he came on board. And we uh, called him T-Money. <laughs> yeah, uh, great guy, great oh, guy. He, yeah. shot there. He, uh, he came on board, and I, I, I remember that I interviewed him. Uh, I interviewed him over the phone. He was, in, uh, he was in Philadelphia at that time. He had left New York and went to Philadelphia. I interviewed him, and he came down, and I interviewed him at City Hall. And I knew that was the guy because I thought it was at the right time the department needed somebody from the outside. So that experience that I had uh, at, at, at City Hall and dealing with 
with not only local government, but county government, state government, even federal government. You know, I'm proud to say that I've been to Tallahassee, I've been in front of the House and the Senate, I've been to Washington to lobby. So those are the things that a sheriff is gonna have to do. I mean, listen, I don't care. They're saying, hey, you know, he's a politician. I haven't had, I haven't held public office in 15 years. But you know what I have to say to all these candidates? You're all politicians. Yeah. <laughs> You're running welcome, for office. Welcome, welcome to the show. Welcome, welcome to, the, to the, the political arena. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and they have to understand that. Now, I also had the experiences. I said, well, he's never supervised police, uh, police officers. Well, I have. When I was the chairman of the Downtown Development Authority, we hired a lot of police officers for special events. Well, as a chairman, not only did I write you the check, but I also sat down with the, 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 the commander of the uh, downtown. We worked together on putting together the, the, the safety plan for the events. And even as at Bayfront Park, when I was also the chairman there, you know, we have major events in that park. We have uh, events every year. The Bob Marley Foss Festival was at them. I don't recall if, uh, I think the one year that we did Ultra, but I'm not too sure. But every year we did the uh, That's New, his Year's, favorite event, sorry. New, New uh, Year's event. <laughs> yeah. to, when you mentioned the, Ultra, you had to look yeah. at me on it. Yeah. Yeah. The Ultra. New Year's Love event that, that, that's held at, at Bayfront Park. And listen, that's, uh, uh, you know, tens of thousands of people go to huge, that event. Huge, huge yeah. event. So, as a chairman, it gave me the opportunity, not only as someone who had law enforcement experience and prior law enforcement at that time, to work with John Timoney. I worked with Frank Fernandez to put together a safety plan because we were very, very concerned that at that time, you know, we were going through some, uh, some threats. And uh, we put together a safety plan. Not only did I participate in that, and John Timoney would call me and say, hey, you know, you're, you're a former law enforcement officer. What do you think about this? And we would talk. And... And, and we put together the plan, and, and for many, many years, I mean, we hardly ever had any incidents. Why? Because we were prepared. We had the adequate staffing. We had the adequate plan. I would, I would be in the command center with the police officer. Even though I was running the park as a chairman, I had staff to do that. But my, my heart was always in law enforcement. So when I, uh, when I ran for mayor in, in, 19, uh, in 2009 and I lost, I went back to what I committed myself to all my life, which has been law enforcement. So I was blessed to go back to the department, and as soon as I get there, uh, they say, hey, you know, we, we have a position open for PIO, and you would be the guy. I mean, you were with the city, ma'am. You had a camera on you every, every time. Yeah. And it, it was a blessing that uh, they offered me that position, and, and I accepted that position, which, which is an incredible uh, responsibility. Right. People don't realize that as the PIO, and, 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 and Camacho could vouch for me on that, is that we work with rank and file. Yeah. I mean, every major event that we have to deal with, we have to sit down with rank and file and, yeah. and, and put that information out, which I was always very good at doing that for the simple reason that I always said, look, we have to feed the beast, and the beast is the media. Right. We have to provide them with the adequate, adequate intelligence, and it basically it has to be the facts. Because the last thing you want to do is say something that is not true. It's like, I always said that words are like bullets. You know, if you fire a bullet, it's hard to get it back. Right. Just like words. So yeah. I, I, I honestly feel that I am the candidate who has a variety of experiences to be able to lead this department. And I'm an outsider. I realize that, that I'm an outsider. Right. I'm not from the department. But that's being an outsider is a good thing. And I, I tell officers that all the time. I said, look. I don't know anybody a favor in Miami-Dade Police Department. I, I'm not a part of a clique. Uh, I come in with new ideas, with a clean slate, to be able to take a department and make it a better department. And I believe that working together today, we have a golden opportunity to take that department and make it a better department so we could provide better service for the residents and visitors of this county. And that's the end of the and podcast. <laughs> Thank you for coming. <laughs> that was perfect. Yeah. So um, sounds good. I was going to ask you. Yeah. You've been in the race now. How long? Is this the beginning uh, of the year? I've, no, no, no. I, I, I filed. And you know, first of all, let's get back to it. I yeah. had to wait to file because my department mm. requires me to take a leave of absence, mm -hmm. or resign, or retire to run for office. Before okay? you can run. Yeah, because right. I cannot be out there campaigning on taxpayers dime, okay? Mm. But that alone, we have several Miami-Dade officers, mm -mm. which they all have high-ranking file Ooh. ranks. They're all making six figures, and they're out there campaigning on taxpayers dime, and there is no leadership in that department, nor the mayor, to say, hey, you can't do that. I guarantee you that if I did that or some other police officer from another department did it, they would be seeing the state attorney and possibly being indicted 
for theft, okay? Because what they need to do on all five of those six or seven of those uh, uh, candidates need to take out their pe- uh, checkbook and reimburse the county for the time they've been out there politicking, okay? Mm-hmm. And, and I, I, I know that because I'm doing the right thing. You want to be sheriff of this county, then do the right thing. Mm-hmm. If you're going to lead in an example, do the right thing. You think your officers are going to follow you if you don't do the right thing? I'm here to win the trust of the officers in this community. All right, so... I personally like uh, haven't, I haven't seen anybody campaigning, so I, I, I can't weigh in on that, but you're the second person that's come on this podcast and say no, that. I've been campaigning, buddy. No, no. I'm losing he, by 20 points right now. That's how I think, although I'm winning by 20 points in the <laughs> polls. Okay. Oh, so you are winning by 20, but in your mindset, you got that dog in you. Hey, I know how to run, and I, I run scared. All right. So, so I mean, you kind of you kind of hit on it a little bit, and, and how that, so since you started, how's it going for you? Uh, are you out there? Look, How's the grind? It's, How's look, the grind? It, it's great because I'll tell you this much. I've been on TV for 25 years. You know, yeah, People know me from the city. I've been an elected official in the city of Miami. And I could probably say an elected official that's unindicted. <laughs> I have never been indicted. I have never been accused of anything in that city. I served this city and I served it proudly. And I can tell you this much. No one could point a finger and say Joe Sanchez is corrupt. Joe Sanchez has been investigated by the federal government. Joe Sanchez has been investigated by the state attorney's office. You know, I've done everywhere that I've gone that I've served, I do it proudly. And always thinking that, you know, I have to do what's right. And at night when I sleep, I sleep very calmly because, you know what, I don't worry about anybody coming to my house and accusing me of doing something that is not right. So, in, in, the, in the race, right, you... And this is the beginning part of it, and and I don't I don't I don't kind of agree with this, but you have to either run as a Republican or you run as well, a Democrat. Listen, right? that, that, so yeah. just before before you get into it, are you what are you running as, so the audience can know? I'm running as a Republican, but okay. I'll tell you this much: Tallahassee, when they came up with these five constitutional positions that are up for election, these are positions that should have never been partisan. Okay. Mm-hmm. I ran for a city commissioner, which was nonpartisan. I ran for mayor that was nonpartisan. These positions should be nonpartisan, but they're partisan. Yeah. Okay, I have no control over that. I've been a Republican all my life. Those are the values that I believe in. Now, I could tell you this much. It doesn't really matter what party you're from. You could be an independent. You could be a Republican. You could be a Democrat. You're here to serve an entire community, a very diversified community, a community that the next sheriff needs to know. And I could tell you that the 52 years that I've been in, the 40 years that i provided service, I've been everywhere in this community. People know me in this community for the simple reason that I've, either, I've been an elected official, elected by the people, and I have been with the Florida Air Patrol as a public information officer providing information and educating the public on public safety. And all those years, and this is something off topic, all those years, and there was rumors that after a while being, being an FHP trooper, you lose your hair from the hat. But you still got your full set of hair. I got plenty. Of, uh, you know, and you know, uh, you're looking good up there. I can't say the same. It's almost like I'm a trooper. Yeah, listen, the hat didn't affect him. He's I, I, good. Yeah, I'll tell you. I'll tell you, you, know, you know, listen, I, I hated to wear that hat. <laughs> I hated to wear that hat. But, you know, every time that I had to get in front of the, the cameras and every time that I either went somewhere and represented the department, man, I looked my best. Yeah. You know, people tell me nowadays and. And, you know, I look at, you know, Freddie Cruz in the city. Hey. Uh, you know, he, I, he looks sharp. Yeah. And, you know, when you're a brand, yeah. and police officers are a brand, you are a brand. It's the department that you represent. You need to represent that department to the best. Yeah. You know, the Absolutely. worst thing that you could do is see a police officer that looks like crap. Yeah. You know, his uniform all is all wrangled. His food's all over his uniform. Man, you're doing a disservice to yourself and the department you serve. People who know me will go, man, it's 98 degrees out there, and you got class A in a tie. Yeah. Yeah. You know why? Because I want to make my department look the best. I take pride in what I do. Everything that I've done in life, I try to do the best and be the best that I can be. I've seen you at some uh, events, and, uh, yeah, you're up in – with the with the whole tie and everything, like almost like a turtleneck up there. I'm like, man, it's like 98 degrees out there, sweating bullets. Yeah, but you were out there, and so I can attest to that. And I gotta wear that hat when I get in front of a camera. It's <laughs> it's iconic though. Yeah, I know. You know, some people don't. Yeah. It's iconic. That yeah. trooper hat. Put that campaign hat. Get out the car. Start walking towards the other cars. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got chills. That's that intimidating look. But it's like you said, it's taking pride in the way you look. That's what it is. Yeah. So uh, coming from the outside, um, and you mentioned it, right? Uh, you think it's going to be a challenge coming from the outside and, and getting your well, bearings on? Listen, it's going to be a challenge for, for police officers that are within that department that, you know, a lot of them 
maybe, you know, they want to maintain the same status quo. But I'll tell you one thing. When I go out there and I talk to the officers of Metro Dade, Miami Dade, I say Metro Dade. Metro Dade, old school. Yeah, old Miami, school. Old, good old school. <laughs> Miami Dade Police Department. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I get some officers. Man, look, you know, it's 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 a good department, but you know, there's double standards. You know, uh, a lot of people are getting promoted without merit, and and that when you do that in a department, you 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 basically destroy a department. You destroy the foundation because you have people who the are morale. committed to law enforcement. The morale. Yeah. You're committed to law enforcement. Listen, when I came on the department. You know, 1987. You know, it wasn't for the money, pal. Yeah. It was because I wanted to be a cop. I wanted to serve. You know, I, 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 I wanted to be a police officer. It wasn't for the money. I can tell you that much. Today, you, you may have officers that come in, and it's th- th- their heart's not in the right place to serve the community. So, getting back to that, you know, and and I get people. Hey, you know, I, I, I took the test. I, I, I did well, but you know, they, they gave it to this guy because apparently he knows somebody at, at county hall, or he knows somebody. Uh, so that favoritism and stuff has to change the department. Look, it's not a bad department. I, I, I've, I've reviewed the department. I've worked with the department, so I know. Uh, there's a lot of things that we could do in that department to change it. I am a uh, transformational leader. I look at uh, you know short-term, long-term goals and vision in that department, but I'm a guy that can bring consensus to that department. And when I say that, I can tell you that there's a lot of people in that department that their heart's in the right place, they have great talent, and they just need to be given an opportunity. And I think that we have an opportunity right now to take that department and take it to another level, and uh, I'm looking to, you know, surround myself with the best of the best directors. They've asked me now, have, do you have a deputy director? I have nobody right now. My goal is to get elected, surround myself with the brightest of the brightest, and there's some bright people in that department, and work together. Listen, the next sheriff who's going to be uh, the sheriff that's going to oversee the entire uh, sheriff's department is going to have to be one that's going to have to work with a lot of people to accomplish the mission. It's, ta- it's, it's going to be a complex task yeah. just alone. The transformation from a Miami-Dade police department to a sheriff's department. And, you know, you get people say, well, you know, the badge, we're still a sheriff's department. You know, we're always going to be a sheriff's department. Yeah, but listen, it's the procurement. It's the transferring of power. The county's going to switch everything over. And you got to make sure that you bring the best directors to make sure that that smooth transition is done right. One, one thing that we cannot do is waste taxpayers' dollars. Two, we cannot duplicate services. And three, we have to have a smooth transition to win the trust of the public and the people we serve to realize and say, look, they did it. It's a police department. It's a sheriff's department now. And they're going to be providing a much better service. Hmm. I like it. I like it. What what we're going to do is take a quick break right now. When we come back in this next coming um, breaks here, we have our next coming segments. I apologize. We have some questions from the audience. I polled the audience on my Instagrams, and they sent in some questions, so we'll take a look at that. I also have some questions I want to ask you, those tabletop exercises. All coming back, we got what's going to be coming to the department, new technology, some AI stuff. Maybe we're going to talk about those street takeovers. Oh, oh. Those street takeovers. <laughs> and uh, when we come but, but, back. Which they're out of control. Oh, and yeah. we're going to talk about it when we and come back. And an embarrassment to this department. Big topic in the police world right now. Not oh. just locally, but nationally. Stay those- tuned for the tea. Hello Miami-Dade, my name is Joe Sanchez. After arriving here from Cuba at the age of six and attending Miami Senior High School and graduating from Miami-Dade Community College, this community has raised me. I've dedicated my life to service. Joining the Army Reserve in the 36 years with the Florida Highway Patrol, I've stood in the front lines for you. Through many challenges and disasters that have affected our county, I've been there, shoulder to shoulder with heroes, striving to protect our community. As a commissioner and the face of the Florida Highway Patrol in South Florida, I've always aimed to be a leader and be the voice of our community. Now, I'm asking you for your trust and support. Together, let's make Miami-Dade a beacon of safety and unity. Join me at SanchezForSheriff.com. Thank you. Oh, and we're back! For an audience of 50,000 people, they've stayed pretty quiet yeah. throughout the whole podcast. Yeah. Wow. Because we got... We go, guys, 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 guys. Really good. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So. All right, Nick. Shoot. We're back. So I had the... Uh, I, uh, you didn't know this because you didn't see it, but ran your commercial, your 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 campaign ad. Yeah, my we, introduction. Your introduction. Yeah. We put it on for the audience to Great. see. Good. So. Well, just, just wanted to let you know that. Yeah, no, no. Great. It just, just shows... 
where I come from and who I am and where I'm going. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, real quick, if if you if you're listening to the show, you like Joe and you want to know Mo. You see what I did there? <laughs> uh, go ahead freestyle, and head freestyle. over to what's the website that they can go to? Uh, Joe Sanchez for Sanchez, Sheriff. Sanchez for Sheriff. Sure. There it is. Yeah. SanchezforSheriff.com. Yeah. And over there, you can also donate. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, so we, go visit. Yeah, we're doing very well in that department, too. Oh, yeah, that's something. Well, that... I can't compete with the mayor Uh-oh. and her candidate. Oh, I who's mean, the mayor's candidate? Well, I'm not going to mention any names, <laughs> but, you know, she's raising a lot of money for her uh, candidate. Mm. Okay, okay, so she has uh, she has her horse, I guess, yeah, in the race. Yeah, uh, you know, everybody wants to maintain power and run a million-dollar budget. Mm. So you're saying there's some connection there. All right, well, we read between the lines here on Nick Off Duty Presents. Hey, you wanted to heat this up, man. Let's I'm... get the party started. <laughs> All right, that's why I brought the fans in. I brought some fans and put it on the ground. I these can't wait for the party to start. Hot. The hey, hot um, seat. So, real quick, so there's a new bill that just came. It's, I think it's on the governor's desk. He um, will sign it. I'm telling you, he will sign it. You know, you know Ronnie. I know Ronnie. That's I know my... the lieutenant governor. I've, you know, I provided the detail, uh, security detail for him, so I know him. <laughs> and he will sign Senate Bill 184. Okay, so that Senate Bill, uh, 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 City Ralph, what am gotcha. I going to call you? Am I calling you Ralph? Ralph. City Ralph? Call me Ralph. Call right. me Ralph. We'll uh, keep it. I don't call you by your IG okay. handle? No, we, you can put it on the screen if you want your help. Yeah, Help man. a brother out. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he's going to pull it up on the screen. I have an article here so we can take a look and I'll read it through. So basically this bill is, mm, I wouldn't say protecting, but it gives officers an avenue for these so-called police agitators, where they call them First Amendment auditors, which in other words, police agitators. Well, they can be both, right? You might have some people that are legit out there recording and they're just... Kind of just recording the officer what they're doing. And then you have people out there that are there just to agitate the police officer, yeah. try to get a reaction while the officer is doing their duty. You want to read the article? You know what? Go to the bill. So let's wait. Here, what, is, what does that say right there? Under the bill, people can be arrested for harassing a first responder if they are within 14 feet and have been given a warning. It defines harassment as trying to cause, quote, substantial emotional distress. Violators could be arrested and charged with a misdemeanor. So... Uh, real quick, and and people here are the the there's a pro and uh, what is it anti what is it pro and whatever pro and con there's an anti side there's a pro side and anti side and the anti side is saying that they're going to be taking away the the First Amendment there or freedom of speech or they're taking away yeah, the right to, to record. record yeah right so they're taking that away that's what this bill is saying and there's arguments on both sides but I I I'm going to say my piece after you say your piece but. You want to hit the actual bill real quick so yeah, we can read some right. of the, the... The verbiage. There it is. <clears throat> read, Ralph, you want to read it? Or, you know, you're far away. It's far from Okay, me. it says... Uh, uh, Impeding and threatening and harassing first responders. As simple as that. What else do you want to read? These guys that are out there, and I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to speak from the heart. Do I, You know, being a police officer. Our job is dangerous and stressful as it is right now. The last thing we need is an idiot mm -hmm. to be out there instigating us impeding us from performing our duties. And you know, at the end of the day, this bill passed the House and the Senate with very few discussions. So people could say, you know, violation of constitutional right. It passed with very few discussions because we needed this bill. We needed this bill to have teeth now. So when you're out there doing your job and you're investigating and you have somebody insulting you and threatening you and basically impeding you from providing the service, which is the service that you provide the public safety, Public safety. It's getting great support. And what we need to do is put that bill out to the public, and I guarantee you there will be more support to it. Because at the end of the day, and you see it, people see it on, on officers that are out there. And you might be somewhere eating. You, you get your break to sit down and have a nice uh, uh, lunch or dinner that you're having, and it's been a long day. You have multiple calls. You're stressed. And the last thing you need is somebody to show up with a phone to record you and harass you. How would you feel, and I'm asking this not a police officer, I'm asking the public, how would you feel if you were in that situation and someone had a uh, phone on, on your camera telling you, hey, you're, you're a fat slob, uh, you know, hey, uh, you know, uh, your wife's cheating on you and all these things. That is harassment. Yeah. So police officers are now under this bill, yeah. whether it's if you're conducting an investigation and you're out there protecting a scene and somebody comes out there and harass you, hey, you will have, Based on Senate Bill 184, 
to give that person a warning, if you're so, such a nice guy, to give them a warning, and then arrest them. Yeah. Because you know what? The next sheriff is going to have to arrest people in this community. we got to get this order. We get, law and order has to be restored in this county. Yeah. Okay? We can't be babysitting people. All right? But I, one of the complaints that I got a couple of uh, days ago is from police officers spent four and a half hours, almost five hours, at TGK to turn in a prisoner. That's the jail, if you don't that, know. That's the jail. Yeah, so yeah. he made the arrest. He's out there. You know, you have to A form. You have to give a bracelet. You have to go through the process. And you get to the TGK, and you have to wait five hours. That's wild. To turn in a prisoner. So now you got to babysit somebody for five hours who's probably doing the same thing, harassing you, insulting you. That's unacceptable. Yeah. Those things have to change. And I'm telling you, as sheriff, those things under my administration will change. And side note, are, is sheriff now taking over also the correction side? No, no. Thanks to our great mayor yeah. who spent millions of dollars going to Tallahassee trying to kill Amendment 10. Yeah. She was able to separate fire and corrections. All right. So we're only going to have the, the sheriff's department now, all 67 counties, will have a sheriff's department. So can you believe that? That's a start. Now you have, well, but listen, just about every sheriff's department in the county has police and the yeah. jail. Yeah. They make sense, right? Yes. Okay. No, it all it, it all lines up. I mean, it goes hand in hand. And into, fire. Well, a lot of things don't make sense to the county. And yeah. And and the firefighters, although firefighters are a different monster. It's like you know yeah. taking care of little kids. But uh, yeah. No, hey, listen, let me tell you, man. Shout I, out to my firefighters. I, out there. I, I, hey, listen, I'm, I'm I would not run into a burning building. No, I don't. I'd rather fight it off with anybody with a handgun I get, I get and, so. and defend myself. But burning buildings, yeah, I don't think so. They're, they're you know, there's it's brotherly love. You know what I mean? No, they do a great job. Yeah, they do. Pub, pub, they're all right. First responders, nah, man, you gotta love a firefighter. I, I, I love them. They're all right. They want to be cops. They couldn't make it through the police academy. I get it. <laughs> Nick, I get it, Joe. If I could touch on something uh, about no, what I wanna, you just said. Yeah, we're gonna, what do you mean? Go no, ahead. just what, what, yeah. uh, something really fast because the thought came to my mind when he was speaking. So how you were saying you need to restore order in the streets and, and you know, you know, officers need to start taking action again and all those little things as far as, um, you know, like the bill that's being passed for to not harass officers anymore or, or going to TGK having to wait five hours or maybe staffing isn't. Um, at, a, at a place where it should be, so officers are getting drafted. I just think those things yes. as a whole play into less productivity because as a cop, well, last time I went to TGK, yeah. it was five hours. You know what? I'm not going to make that arrest. Or, la or I'm getting harassed. I'm not going to make that arrest. So as a whole, there's like 20 different issues that I think play into it's a ripple less effect. proactivity yeah. because of all these issues, these small little things that become one big issue. Well, but listen, at the end of the day, I'll tell you what a police officer wants. I'll tell you what I want as a police officer. I want a supervisor who's going to back me up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, I could understand. In every department, there are three things you're going to get fired from. Brutality, corruption, and racism. Yeah. Those things you're going to get fired. Yeah. But if I go out there and I'm going to do my job, and I did my job within the, law, the, the, the letter of the law, the policy of the department, all right, you should protect those officers. Absolutely. You need to have a sheriff who's going to back up the officer. Look, they, they've asked me a couple of times, well, you know, you're, you're a trooper. What are you going to do for Miami-Dade police officers when they become a sheriff? Look, my responsibility is going to be a simple one. I'm going to give you the best equipment that I could give you for you to do your job and the best equipment for you to protect yourself to make sure that you go home every night to your family, all right? I'm going to back you up. I'm going to give you not only the best training that I have, and I took a tour of that training facility, Miami-Dade County, and <laughs> Metro-Dade office. Man, we go back to old school. Metro, Metro. Metro. Miami -Dade. No, you I say you bring it back, bro. Listen, I tell, listen, I tell, I tell my back, wife every now and then, I'm going to go to Eckerd Drug. She goes, really? Eckerd Drug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Miami-Dade oh, Police Lord. Department. Yeah. Listen, I visited their training facility. It's an embarrassment. Mm. I'm, I'm sorry, but it's, a, it's an embarrassment. Mm. Great people that work there. Their heart's in the right place. They got a great training institution. But the county doesn't put the adequate resources that it needs to put to have a world class. And then we have international people that come and train. Once again, Miami-Dade Police Department, it's a brand. Yeah. We got to sell that brand. That's going to be the best brand in this nation. And we We're going to work together to best. accomplish that. And the last thing that I want to make sure is I will not take any benefits that you have. All right, there's a lot of rumors out there, people that are putting out that Joe Sanchez, a state trooper, is going to do away with the FRS, Florida Retirement System, folks. I have nothing to do with the Florida Retirement System. That is the state, and I will not take any benefits from you. You will be the best paid deputies in the United States if I become sheriff with the best benefits. You know why? Because I'm going to back you up, and you're going to go out there, and you're going to help me make this county the safest county in this nation. There you Ooh. go. Boost that morale up. I like That's it, what man. It's about.
pay pay raises or are you going to cops are going to be respected yeah i'm telling you right now if i'm sheriff cops are going to respect it because if you go out there yeah and you arrest somebody and somebody punches you you're going to punch them right back Ooh, i like that i like, I like that. that he's bringing it back um so to bring all the way all the way back because i know we kind of like whew, we yeah. took off but that bill that bill protects officers um that are doing their legal duty right, right. during their legal duty uh, if anyone comes up and harasses, you have it. You want to read it now? That's in front of you. Yeah, I can. read that part. The actual, just the part of the actual bill. Yeah. So the the general bill is impeding, threatening, or harassing first responders, prohibiting a person after receiving a warning not to approach from a first responder who is engaged in the lawful performance of a legal duty, from violating such a warning and approaching or remaining within a specified distance of the first responder with specified go. intent. Yeah. So I believe this on the article it said fourteen feet. But uh, what what it's saying there is uh, a specified distance. And, but it also says duty, right? Um, Legal duty. Yeah. Right. So that who's that in the law? Pr- who's in the lawful perform lawful performance of a legal duty? If so, you're securing a scene, that's lawful duty. So right. what this does, it gives you probable cause to mm. make an arrest. Yes. Yes. Simple. Don't complicate it. Simple. Right. And I just want to I want to build on that because somebody might say, well, if I'm not on, on a traffic stop or I'm just walking around this train station, we had a, a, a transit might like Miami Dade has a transit unit. If I'm walking around the train station because I've seen videos officers at the train station and this these people these antagonizers come up with a camera and they're telling me what are you guys doing you guys can't do ah, and putting it in their face so these, these guys are there at the train station they're doing their legal duty yeah, they may not be on a call they may not be on on a traffic stop but they're still it is their legal duty to be in that train station they're not parked in the parking lot they're walking or they're standing in there what are they doing they're scanning making sure there's no danger they're there in high visibility that's their legal duty so not they're not on a call they're just on patrol yeah. but that's their legal it duty it still falls within the scope of this bill so if you want to put a camera in their face they're going to tell you hey man you need to back up over there 14 feet you don't do and, it and and you know 14 feet they had every right to record you yeah they they, they they're, they're under listen that's the next nice. sheriff the one responsibility is going to have is to protect everybody's constitutional right yeah you know the constitutional right protects us all all right and we must, I am a big stickler for the Constitution. And a responsibility of every police officer is that, to protect everybody's constitutional right. And 14 feet, you can record me all you want. Now, you yeah. come and you harass me, and I have the authority to make an arrest based on probable cause that I've given you a warning. Blah, blah, blah. Arrest. Arrest them. Yeah, so, so and, and to continue, just, and then we're going to wrap it up. But just the, the act of recording, and I want to make this clear, is not harassment. No. It is the recording and the antagonizing, and it is the you are a piece of sh- uh, caca, you're this, you're that, you're this, and you're impeding, and now you're taking my attention, and now I have to engage with you or, or talk to you. But Nick, Go Nick, ahead. We have yeah. cameras too. Yeah. And we need to use those cameras to our advantage. Yes. Listen, when they came up with the cameras years ago, and I was very active in, in, in the department with, with, with the cameras, and our cameras are completely different. Yeah, they have the You have body cameras. We have cameras inside our car, outside our yeah. car, 360, yeah. glove compartment camera, mm-hmm. trunk camera. Yeah, uh, camera everywhere. everywhere yeah. All right? We have yeah. cameras everywhere. These cameras are there to be used for your safety and your protection because I can honestly tell you that today, when complaints against police officers have been reduced because it's no longer what you have to say or what I have to say. You go anywhere, and if you go to court, and your honor here to swear me in, your honor here to what it, I have it recorded. It is what it is. Boom, and you play it. Yeah. So yeah. those cameras are there for our advantage. Absolutely. We need to use that to prosecute those people. And these people that instigate, impede, threaten, harass first responders, based on your camera, you're recording them too. So there you go. You have in you, you have, have your record evidence. and yeah. your evidence to move forward and make an arrest based on probable cause. Yeah. All right, moving on. I'm going to go to this stuff What's that next? boils my blood. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't like these guys. These are them street takeover boys. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and, I, and I say it jokingly, but because I, I mention it a lot on this podcast, I just, it, just, it just irks me, right? And as a law enforcement officer... Uh, there are some things that we're just handcuffed. It would just, yeah. whether it be policy, whether it be you know uh, maybe leadership, or just something that doesn't allow us to do our job, which is to stop these, mitigate them, 
uh, protect our, our, our drivers out there that are driving and, and, well, and abiding by the law. Now they got to stay in traffic or their traffic is backed up or you got these knuckleheads <clears> on <throat> motorcycles and dirt bikes flying by them, doing wheelies, people in the intersections uh, spinning out. Not only that, it's becoming dangerous to each yeah. other. They're engaging police officers that arrive to yeah. the scene. So it's becoming a nightmare. It's not only all over the nation. We see it horrendous in California, but it's moving its way to yeah. Miami, and it has been here now a little bit. Not as bad over there, but it's it's getting there. Yeah, but at first we allowed it. Yeah. So what? <laughs> so Sheriff Sheriff Joe. Yeah, yeah. What are we doing? Well, I'll tell you what. At first, yeah. they allowed it. Yes. They allowed it to happen, and it was oh my god, they're just having fun. Yeah, they were having fun till they started shooting themselves and yeah. getting people killed, yeah. doing that stupidity and harassing people who needed to get to their homes to their school, to their work, to their loved ones, those people are impeding. Well, what we need to do with that, and it's very simple. Listen, today we have the three elements of law enforcement, which is adequate and, uh, adequate and timely intelligence, okay? We have that because these idiots post it, mm-hmm. and they let you know exactly where they're going to be. The next thing that we need to do is what? The resource. We have the resources. We have the rapid response team. We got plenty of police officers. Look, there was a video where they were doing donuts around a, uh, a Miami-Dade Police department unit. That's the, it was embarrassing. That has to be embarrassing. They were doing donuts around the unit. Okay? So if we have the resources, and then we have the tactics, the, the tactical. We have the tactics to do it. We have it. We need to address that. And how we're going to do it is you go out there and you stop it. You make the arrest. You block the intersections. Everyone that's participating in it, you arrest them because they're recklessly driving and putting people's lives in danger. That's an arrestable offense. People that are participating in it, you cite them, and their cars can be towed because when you cite them, if they have a suspended driver's license, then you have the right to tow their vehicle. Yeah. And then when you tow their vehicle, if they have a firearm that's illegal and they're convicted film, you can take a, 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 a weapon off the street. So mm-hmm. law enforcement, it's a variety of things. It's connecting the dots that we're not doing because in some way, people are afraid nowadays to make those, those decisions. Now, if like everything in, in law, if you allow it, they continue to do it, and those crimes escalate and they become bigger and bigger with with crime you go out there and you make intersection arrests five or six you put a task force together you think those kids want to lose their cars most of them are stolen anyway but you recover a car you block those intersections you make sure they can't get away from from it and you hit it hard that's how we're going to fight crime we have to hit it hard we have to work and we have to Put people in jail look at all well you know jails we're going to have to hey we need to build more jails let's build them that's a more economy, more jobs for people, yeah. but our streets are going to be safe. But we can't continue to do that. Years ago, I remember, and we tackled this issue in the Florida High Patrol. Oh, you know, guns up, uh, wheels up, guns down. Mm-hmm. Oh, they, we were making five, six, seven arrests. Now they're starting to make arrests. You know why they're starting to make arrests on this? Because they know they're going to elect the sheriff. And before, they just didn't want to do it. It's not that they wanted to do it. I mean, they, I'm sure that they wanted to do it. But they just didn't put the effort into it. you got to put the effort into it because once you make arrests and you go out and people see it on TV, they're going, man, I'm not going to go out there and do that because I'm yeah. going to get arrested. They're going to take away my car. If I'm out there just looking at it and being a spectator, I'm going to get cited. You know? So that's what we have to do. We have to address those issues and hit them hard. The, the, and you're absolutely right on that, right? So it started with some motorcycles, and then – since there was no arrest made or just there wasn't a heavy police presence, it grew and grew. And it became a national thing where people were coming from around the nation, and they still are. Because it's okay to do it. They're not going to do anything. Hey, in my, there's not no only, consequence. We, there's we get, no consequence. We get to drive yeah. around Miami. That's uh, the allure of just Miami. Yeah. And I got dirt bikes, and we're in Vice City, and we're doing all this <gasps> stuff. So if you let that go, it grows and grows. So people might be thinking, hey, guys, these are just misdemeanors. Leave them alone. They're just kids having fun. Let them ride for a day. No, because it continues to grow. Yeah, and it gets worse. People die. They're kicking cars as they're going by. If you don't stop for them and they're, they're recklessness, they're going to kick your car and damage your rear view mirror. And they're going to jump you if you get out of your car. So this it's becoming dangerous for the citizens to just drive and do their daily functions. So we're, we're We looking. are allowing lawlessness, okay? Yeah. We're allowing criminals here. We're giving criminals more rights than victims, okay? And we can't allow that. That's why these cities in New York, Philadelphia, Chicago are going to cry. Crap, yeah. because they're allowing criminals more rights, and that's not going to happen here. It's yeah. not going to happen here under my leadership as a sheriff, and it's not going to happen here because this community supports police enforcement. Yeah. And if there's one thing that we have is that municipalities, federal, state, have a good 
rapport working together. Yeah. And all it takes is to put someone who can lead and bring consensus together to address these issues that we have let gone array yeah. in this community. So and, let, me, let me just ask you, because you're going to get into, uh, you know, if you, you're going to let your officers or your deputies now, you give them, hey, man, we're going to stop this. Now, there's police work's not pretty. You got to stop some people on a dirt bike. Yeah. They might wreck out. Yeah. You got to stop some people that are fleeing from you. Something might happen. It's just having that back. And, and I see it in, in um, you know, like central Florida. Nick, you got to be intelligent. Listen, we, the, the, the county has done it. You follow these individuals. They got to gas up. Yeah. And then when they go in a gas station is when you block them in. Yeah, but I'm, what I'm getting at is there might be some, because if you, if, you your, your, if you let your dogs out, someone's going to get bit. Yeah. Basically, yeah. So Central Florida, some things happen, and then they're like, "Hey, man, we're 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 an area of law and order." Yes, my officers, I gave them the opportunity to do this. Something happened, and it is what it is. This is what police work is. It's not pretty. Not it's no, not perfect it's, either. It's not perfect. Some things, are, but they got to have no. the backing of that sheriff. Pu and I just want to know where your stance is. Well, one more time to reiterate. If I mean, you mentioned something before is that these officers out there that are working to ensure that, uh, or, you know, are you going to be, are you going to have their back if something goes a little bit froggy? I mean, it, it is what it is. You tell officers to make an arrest on somebody who doesn't want to go to jail, they fight, something happens, they wreck out, something happens, they have a gun, God forbid there's a shooting, you know, escalate to the highest thing, somebody, somebody dies. Listen, there will be an investigation as it is, yeah. and, you know, there, there, there's avenues to take, but if that investigation comes back and there's evidence that you are doing your job, of course I'm going to back you up. Yeah. I'm going to be there w with you. Now, we also have to take into consideration that we can't go out there and, you know, chase a motorcycle where we chase him and that individual either kills himself or kills somebody else. You know, there's, you, you, you have to have common sense. Right. And there are policies and departments that we need to follow. We need to be a department that follows uh, policies. But absolutely, look, you could go out there and make a mistake, and it's not going to be termination. Look, maybe you'll go through a little training, and you'll be back out on the road. Now, but once again, if you go out there and you violate somebody's constitutional right, brutality, corruption, and racism will not be accepted under my leadership as sheriff. But a police officer that works, who's committed to safety and goes out there and may do something that doesn't require from to fire, hey, you, you know, you, you're going to come back to work. Okay. You'll be back to work. You're going to have the support of the administration and the sheriff of this county. All right. Sounds good. Ralph, you had anything yeah. to add to that? Because you were trying to. Um, I think on the, on the topic that he was uh, mentioning before, um, I did have something to add on that. All right. No worries. But and okay. uh, we passed it. Are we, what are we like in? Uh, we got like 13 minutes. Hmm. We're 25 minutes into this segment. Okay. Why don't we take a quick break? When we come back, we'll talk about some technology that's coming. Okay. We'll end it on some guests. I'm uh, sorry. Some. Uh, Viewers and followers sent me in some questions, and then they want to talk to you and ask you some questions. So we'll do the AI. We'll do some technology. We'll do another question, and then we'll wrap it up. All right. We'll be right back. Let's do it. Oh, hey. Didn't see you guys there. Just want to take a second to let you know we're broadcasting from Feds Apparel. If you're police, fire, civilian, basically if you wear a uniform, Feds Apparel is the place for you. Visit FedsApparel.com today to check out all they have to offer. I even have a store on there. Feds Apparel. Uniforming America. Now let's get back to the show. And we're back! Yes. Ralph, give me some! All right, cut ooh, it. Ooh, ooh. We got no time for that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We got to rock and roll. They're quick. All and right. They listen. All right, let's get serious. Around the nation, we've seen these horrific incidents. I want to talk about active shooter, large-scale critical incidents, uh, people driving cars into crowds. More, Most importantly, um... Locally, right? Well, they're all important, but for us here talking about Miami-Dade yeah. County Sheriff's, we're talking about locally. <clears throat> Just north of us in Broward, we had the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas not too long ago. And um, I want to know what your plan is when you become sheriff. How do you plan to address this critical incident, like horrific thing from happening in Miami-Dade County? What, what is your training? What uh, resources are you going to use? Just expand a little yeah. bit on that. Well, Nick, it's it's not a matter uh, of if, it's a matter of when. Yeah, and that's it's scary. Gonna happen. That's and it's scary. scary. Yeah. Look, the FBI just put a report out to all the sheriff agencies in the United States. There are more red flags today than before 911. So that's alarming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we need to take into consideration. Look, um, 
act for an uh, active shooter is is something that we as a sheriff's department we're gonna have to train okay it's all about training i could tell you the two best schools right now for active shooters with the advanced law enforcement rapid response training you have lsu which is an incredible uh, university that has one of the best programs and the other one is texas state university active shooter is very simple every officer and this is going to get if there is an active shooter anywhere in this community, you cannot wait for the SWAT team to get there. Correct. You cannot wait for people to assemble outside the parking lot to go in. It is going to be the first officer who responds that has to go in there quickly and stop the killing and stop the dying. Okay? Now, the department is going to have the best training when it comes to that. And we have the rapid response team, which is a good team. Those are the individuals that might get there before. But my fear is that the first person who's going to get there is going to be the officer who's closest to the incident. Right. And that officer has to get in there, be trained to get in there, and terminate the threat as quickly as possible. And I feel that by us training with our department, other departments, school board, Look, one of the things that I'm going to do, and I'm going to put it out here, and I, 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 I've said some things and some candidates steal my ID. One of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to deputize every police officer in the county. I'm going to deputize them. Mm. So <laughs> you can't give me an excuse, hey, man, you know, it's out of my jurisdiction. Oh, yeah. I'm on my way to work. No, no, I'm going to deputize. I'm going to go from municipality to municipality and deputize everybody, talk to the chiefs, see if they want to get involved, and deputize them. Because the, when it comes to mm. active shooting, We've learned from the mistakes of others, so we have no excuse. If we have the adequate training, we could train our officers to get it there quickly as possible without having to get there and put on their gear and go to the trunk and get their weapon. No, 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 no. You get in there, whatever you have, you get in there. Mm -hmm. Now, the other officers are going to come back with the adequate training. They're going to come in, and they're going to be support, backup. But you, you are the one that's going to have to go there and stop the killing and dying as quickly as possible. I want to go back to the deputization of because uh, I'm excited. I'm going to be I'm going to be a deputy pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, we're all going to be sheriffs <laughs> if that comes through. But with that, is that would you say that would be specifically for an event, or there be some kind of no, threshold, or you for, can just take look, traffic stops, or if you see look, something? Look, my job or, as sheriff is to have a multiplier of services. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's a term used in law enforcement, which is called the omnipresence. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard about it, but no. in, in law enforcement, it means that you, you go out there and you see officers. Yeah. You see high officers. Visibility, yeah. And when, high visibility. So when you see officers, you feel safe. You, you know that you're being provided a service. Yeah. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, it's very simple. It's boots on the ground. Mm -hmm. You don't have to come and use these, you know, operational technology, FBI training. Law. We're gonna, boots on the ground. Police officers Presence. out there doing what they need to be doing, okay? Because what happens in the department that we have, there's a lot of people that are in there doing administrative jobs, secretarial jobs, and those are jobs that could be done by civilians. Mm. Pay them half the price and get these officers that are making good salary to go out there and do what they're trained to do and paid to do, which is to fight crime. And not just put them out on the street. Put them in key positions where they could serve the public. And I think that we could accomplish that. I am the leader who will sit down with everybody. I am one who could bring consensus to try to focus on our number one priority, which is to make sure that our community is well protected, there is no fear when you go out on the street, and that we're there for public safety. And that's what people want. Look, it's a service. My campaign is law and order. I'm running as a candidate of law and order. It's not just a political slogan. It's what we desire. Yeah. It's what we deserve. You know, you want your mom, dad to go out and go to Publix or go to church and not have to have fear about being a victim. Yep. And we have that responsibility. Man, we, we took that oath. Yep. We took that oath. We wanted that job. We want to protect the public. We're going to go out there and we're going to do the best we can. And you know what? People will respect you for what you do. People appreciate it. The greatest satisfaction that I get is when I'm having a cup of coffee somebody in a uniform and somebody comes in, hey, thank you for your service. That feels good. It does. I like that. Thank you for your service. Man, it's amazing. It's amazing when people, yeah. you know. Yeah. But then we have to do our part. Yeah. When we walk in an establishment, talk to people. Yeah. How many times have you been in a restaurant and you see the five or six police officers come in and not talk to anybody? Yeah. They don't yeah. talk to anybody. Yeah. 
I go into a restaurant, I talk to everybody. Mm. As a matter of fact, sometimes, hey, man, you're bothering me. <laughs> I don't <laughs> care. That's just the type of guy I am. I want, I, I'm there to sell my presence to you, that I'm a police officer. Man, I'm here to hurt. I'm here to serve you. Let me ask you, and, and we'll, we'll move on. No. But uh, I, wish, I like that. Omni, was it Omni policing? Omni presence. Omni presence. Yes. So that's a big thing. Yes. And, the, and I just want to. Law enforcement it. technology, you know, uh, yeah. language, but. Yeah, but. More uh, boots on the ground. More yeah. police officers on the street. Simple I like design. it. Which, correct me if I'm wrong, that's why they took a lot of, like, two man um, uh, units out because you want both cars. Yeah. Yeah, it's more more. Listen, I, I, I think law enforcement has evolved in the many years that I've been in law enforcement. I, I I think when it comes to community policing, we've done an incredible job. But I think we need to take it a step further. I really do. I I think that we need to be in sync with a very defer, diversified uh, community. I mean, we have a county that's very diversified. Yeah. And listen, I'm be honest with you. Some sectors get the white glove treatment. Some have to fend for themselves. Because, you know, the, the response time is not what it, what it should be. And I think if we work together and we, and, and we uh, come together as a whole entire 35 municipalities coming together with the sheriff's office, office everybody de deputized, I think we could provide a much better service. I like it. So what It's a multiplier factor. So what you're saying is I'm getting a little deputy bump. I'm going to get a yeah, raise on yeah, the yeah. salary for doing the deputy. I don't, I don't know about a salary. Wait, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So uh, let's move on. Let's move on to some, some accountability. We talked about body-worn camera. You, you mentioned something earlier. Your car has a 360 in and out, and one in the muffler. I don't know why you guys have one in the muffler. No, but anyways, have one in the muffler. Oh, <laughs> that's what you said. Uh, so, but we're they talking, forgot to put one there. <laughs> so we're talking about this um, accountability for officers, right? So my question to you is, let's just talk about a scenario, and we don't have to get specific, but... There's some, and it's happening right now as we speak, and I don't want to mention it because there's an ongoing investigation with that. So to weigh in and we don't have all the facts, we'll see how, what comes out of it. But anyways, stuff comes out. Something hits the internet. It's going viral. It's on only in day. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's, it's getting a lot of numbers. Um, people are talking about it. They're tagging your agency. It's becoming a cancer, right? Mm -hmm. So what I, mean, what I mean by that is a potentiality for some civil unrest, or as we like to call it, uh, pre-2010, a riot. Right? Now it's called civil unrest, but neither here nor there. So uh, you got possibly some potentiality for a riot. You got people showing up to your, your police station. We want to talk to the sheriff. This looks bad. This looks horrendous. Maybe a questionable shooting. But the body-worn camera shows the entirety yeah. of the situation. Yeah. But it's an investigation going on, but you have this stuff that's out there, and these people want those officers' heads on a spike. Sheriff Joe, Nick, tell me, that's what where, are you going to do, Sheriff Joe? That's where experience comes in. Calm me down, Sheriff Joe. I was a I'm going to flip this table. I was the public <laughs> information officer for many, many years, okay? Mm. You have to feed the beast, mm -hmm. and the beast is the media. Media. You have to step in front and take control of the narrative all right especially if you have the evidence to show that you are right yeah. mm -hmm. but then you need to have community participation and that's where you as a sheriff need to be in sync with the community whichever community may be face faith corporate yeah organizations different ethnic groups Whatever. You need to have an avenue to be able, and a great department to be able to exhibit your evidence that the police officer was right. Yeah. And they are wrong. Yeah. And the worst things, and I'll give you a perfect example, Ferguson, Sanford. Yeah. It's what the department did. They kept their mouth shut. That's true. So if you don't put out your facts, yeah. the media is going to go and knock on somebody's door. And you're going to say, oh, I saw it this way. And they're going to run with that. And yeah. then your job becomes 10 times harder. Yeah, cause Because then you have to go and defend lies. Yeah. Things that aren't true. So every police department has to have a great public information officer. You got to have it. Mm. We're blessed to have Camacho. Uh, City of Miami is blessed to have Freddie and, and the many more. And Alvaro in the county, he's done an incredible job. Well, sure these are the guys. And the two city guys. Oh, we're sitting right sitting in front right of you, bro. Here, right? You gotta show some love, bro. <laughs> the, these, but these, these are the guys. Hey, listen, I'm, you know, I, 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 I think, I, think I could say that I, I talk Camacho just about everything. He's yeah. not, but he's, he's, he's an incredible, talented yeah. individual. Yeah. But it, it's very important for a police department to have that individual to be able to step out 
Yeah. And it, in this case, it might be the sheriff. It's an incident like that, yeah. you're not going to allow the PIO. Now you're going to sit down with the PIO. That, look, a PIO, public information office, is one of the most important departments you could have in, 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 in any uh, sheriff's department. So you get the facts. You get the truth. You, you support your, your facts and your evidence. And then you have somebody who could go out there and deliver that message. Sheriff Joe, I'm the homicide detective, Sheriff Joe. This, if you say if you say something, it might it might uh, mess up the case. I mean, this is so fresh. We we don't want to put out too many facts, Sheriff Joe. If you but you got the crowd out front. No, no, no. But if you have the right person with the right message, somebody mm. who could do it, mm. it could be done. Okay. And that's where experience comes in. Mm. And I have a variety of experience. Look, I've been the PIO for the department. I have that experience. Very few people that are running for for sheriff have that experience. They don't have the legislative experience. They don't have the governmental experience. Uh, you know, some people may have more experience than me in certain things. But when it comes to overall experiences, yeah. I could tell you that I am the most qualified individual to be the next sheriff of Miami-Dade County. All right. So, and to wrap up that scenario, Sheriff Joe, we want to know. Sheriff Joe, we want to know. What are you going to do? We're out here. I'm about to flip a car. I'm flipping flip the table. I'll do it. What are you going to do? You're going to flip a car? You're going you're gonna to violate the law? You're going to jail. Simple as that. I like that. I like and, that. And, that I'm gonna, and, and it's all about preparation. I'm right. going to have my, my TRT team. I'm going to have my SRT team. Yeah. I'm going to have my rapid response team. Yeah. I'm going to have office. I'm going to have the resources out there yeah. to address that issue. And if you need to go to jail, you're going to jail. We're not going to violate your constitutional right. You okay. want to stand in a corner and protest, and you have every right to do that, I will support you. Now, I mm. won't kneel for anybody. Mm. The only person that I'll kneel down is to God. Mm. I will not deal for any organization, not even a Cuban organization or any organization. Okay. All right? Because I think we have to be fair. But it's the one thing that we need in this county is law and order. And Joe Sanchez is running on law and order. All right. Okay. Okay. I Mic like drop. it. I like it. <clears throat> I want to talk about AI. <laughs> How about that segue, Joe? Ooh. We're killing it on the podcast, Joe. We are, we are. Hey, listen. Uh, uh, so uh, let's talk about uh, artificial we, intelligence. Well, wow. AI technology, like what? So, as a sheriff, right, it's important. It's important to bring some new stuff to the department to help your officers. You said I want to give them equipment. It, maybe not. It's part of my platform. Maybe not computerish stuff. It's part of my platform, right? So maybe not computers. Maybe not AI. No. Or maybe it is. Who knows? But I want to know what are you bringing? to the agency to help better help the officers serve their community? Great question. Deputy listen, serve, sir. Well, listen, we have evolved yeah. in law enforcement, mm -hmm. as you could see from equipment. I remember writing a ticket, yeah. having to take out and write the ticket with three copies. Nowadays, What's it's a, a ticket card. book. Yeah, you know, it's a ticket book. You need my today, laptop, today right? yeah, today you take the, 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 the driver's license, you, you, you run it, and you have everything in the computer. Look, yeah. today we have a great opportunity to take advantage of everything that we have to fight crime. Mm. And thanks to technology, IA, it's endless. It really, AI, AI. AI, AI, it's, yeah. AI I'm sorry. IA, it's, they investigate. Yeah, they 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 we could talk about <laughs> IA if you want. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, you know, it, we, it, it, it enhances everything. It enhances right. communication, uh, uh, properly identifying people, yeah. uh, even facial recognition. Drones nowadays, something that we're using and we need yeah. to use because, you know, we're going to have the resources out there, but we certainly need to have the technology to support the personnel and our tactics. Yeah. And the way that we're doing that nowadays is, I mean, look, we're spending $71 million on new radios, which is going to provide for the county and right. the budget, which is going to basically help us navigate not only through communication but interact and uh so admit so many events uh, uh, so many uh systems they'll be able to assist us in providing a better service so yeah listen i welcome technology uh tag readers license readers those are things that are being used now yeah. we have the uh, nibit uh, we have the uh real-time crime uh, center uh there's a lot of things that we need to use and we need to utilize them more in, in, in providing uh, public safety. I think one of the reasons that the things went uh, pretty smooth in Miami Beach was not only because of the support that Miami Beach got from other municipalities. And you're regarding the spring break. That yeah, spring passed. break. Yeah, okay. spring break. You know, the support that they got from different uh, municipalities and law enforcement, but also the technology that was used. Yeah. I mean, they had a better plan. I think this year was the year that uh, they need to learn from w how it was done this year and make it better every year because that's the whole thing. Something that works today may not work 
10 years from now. Yeah. You know, we have to adapt that. So, yeah, when it comes to technology and stuff, we have a, ver a variety of things that we could use. And we certainly need to invest money in technology. But we also need to invest money into personnel that could use those technologies and make them uh, productive. Okay. All right. I like it. Sounds good. Okay. Well, we're going to get to the hot seat now because these are some random questions from the audience. We're going to get there. I'm going to change the Let's lights to red because it's going to get so hot in this. If it's not hot already, it's going to get so hot. Let's right get the party podcast. started. So we'll, we're going to answer those questions when we come back. Time to turn up the heat. If you're enjoying this historic conversation on what it's going to take to become Miami-Dade Sheriff, make sure you go back. I created a playlist with all the different candidates. Go back and watch those so you guys can get a better feel for these candidates and what they have to offer. Now let's get back to the podcast. Check, check. Checks in the mail. And Joe Sanchez signed it because I'm now deputy as well. Yeah. He deputized me. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> Final episode. If you take a look around the podcast. Oh, those lights didn't go. Hold on. One, one more time. Hold put on. Them, put them red lights. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, wait a minute. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, that's not it. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to get back to this beat right here. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, wait a minute. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, uh. There you go. There you go. There you go. There's another one. Oh, now it's feeling warm in here. The fire, Joe. The hot fire, seat. The hot seat. The hot seat, Joe. Oh, and we got a little. <laughs> we got a little. Uh, hold on one second. Let's go into some questions from the audience. Shoot. All right. So if you're not following me on Instagrams, make sure you follow me over on Instagrams at Nick Off Duty. I also have a Nick Off Duty Presents account for this podcast. That's where I'm going to ask you guys on a weekly basis. Let you know who's coming on the show, ask you some questions, uh, or ask you to give me some questions so I can read it here on the podcast. And I asked somebody, uh, well, I put the questions out, I put the prompt out, the post out last week. And I said, hey, we're having some sh uh, sheriff candidates on. We got Joe. Ask him some questions. So, with that being said, I have some questions for you. Shoot. From the audience. Hmm. I'm going to take the first one. This is how we're going to do it. I'm going to read out your handles. So you guys get a little shout out. We'll put it up on the screen and then we'll have our guest answer it. So the first question is from actually underscore just underscore will. Thank you for the question. How will you grow the agency and retain the best officers? Okay. Very good. One, the one thing that we need to focus on is the, the retention. The retention is something that they, every department is having to deal with that because police officers want to retire. I think the next sheriff is going to play a very important role in some people, whether they leave or they stay. I, I really want to work hard and win them over so they could stay because I believe that institutional knowledge is very important. These officers that have been there for many years, man, you know, they may not work as hard but they have that institutional knowledge. They know how to deal with people. They know how to get the job done. And that, that I, I understand. Hiring process is something that a lot of departments are having to deal with. Now, here's what I want to do. I want to reach out to the military, okay? There's a lot of people that are coming out of the military that will have a great opportunity to serve this department. I also want to start an auxiliary program mm. where a lot of people who want to give back to their community the Florida Hat Patrol has an incredible auxiliary program, people that do give a lot of hours and they do help us out. And we could emphasize on that. But recruiting people is something that we're going to focus on. And you know what? I, one thing that I am going to change, and I think that the county right now, they have civilians that hire police officers. I'm going to change that. Mm. I think police officers should be hiring police officers for the simple reason that police officers know what it takes. Yeah. Mm, they know. They've been, you know? Yeah. Uh, some departments are hiring people that, uh, at the end of the day, you end up losing because they, you hire them and they don't last. Or you hire them and then they're six months, seven months, and they go to another department. Yeah. So, it, you know, on retention side, look, if you're happy, my dad always said, look, find a job that you enjoy doing and you'll never, you'll, 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 you'll never have a bad day in your life. You'll, you'll be happy. Right. And I've done that. You know, I've, I've been with, with the Florida Patrol, and I've enjoyed it. And I, there's been days that I didn't want to go to work, but, you know, very few, very few days. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's something that we need to do on. But once again, focusing on the military, college, there's a lot of kids that are paying themselves through the academy. Those may have an opportunity to come on board. And once again, it's about that process because, we, you know, it's a long process. We need to hire the right people to be law enforcement. Not everybody's a police officer. No, everybody can be a police officer. We know that. It takes a special quality of individual to serve 
and serve our community and do it professionally, ethically, and be proud of our brand. Like it. Okay. What do we got the next one? So the oh, next... sorry. I turned yours pink. It's okay. I'm cool with pink. <laughs> I'm, well, a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm on the cool. That's going to be a soft question. And <laughs> that's the hot seat. This is the cool seat over here. Oh, so it's all good. Yeah. So this next question is from VF underscore Camacho. And he asks, what is your view on law enforcement enforcing uh, immigration laws or serving as immigration officers? Look, the next sheriff of Miami-Dade County is going to have to obey federal, state, and all the laws, okay? We have a responsibility. That responsibility is you took an oath of office, you would follow the Constitution, state laws, federal laws, all the laws. But I could tell you one thing. We in Miami-Dade Sheriff's Office will not have the resources to be asking people for documents, knocking on people's doors, and enforcing those laws. Now, if we do make an arrest and you have a you're arrested for a criminal violation and you have a deportation uh, order, then we will turn you over to the authorities. We have to do that. Yeah. But I can assure you that we have many more responsibilities, and I think that's up to the federal government to deal with the situation. I am a big stickler that law enforcement needs to stay within its lane. You know, federal agencies have a responsibility. We have a responsibility. Now, we could work on some of these things, like drugs and the epidemic that we face nowadays i mean it's 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 incredible that's the perfect example we could have talked about that because i think you know people don't realize that we're losing uh you know we're losing a commercial plane full of people every year in dade county and drug overdoses mm. so you know my message is going to be very clear to the drug dealers you know we're putting you out of business pal i'm going to put together the toughest uh tactical drug unit not only to go to street level after you're in street level distribution sell but we're going after the top tier dealers in this in this community and we're just my message to you is we're going to put a team together that's going to work together prosecute you to the fullest we're going to put you out of business boom okay going out of business sale all I don't right know about that bro. so follow well, we're going to work hard at it okay no, no, and we could do it because and right now i can tell you it's sad you know i know two people who've lost their kids to, yeah. to, to fentanyl Horrible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it, it destroys life. It destroys family. It uh -huh. scars families for, for life. And you know what? You want to talk about something that's really, that hasn't been talked about? Look, we have to get ready for a variety of things. And one is what we're going to be dealing with in the next couple of months to a year. And that's that open border. Mm. Okay. That open border is not an immigration crisis anymore. All right. It's a national crisis. Yep. It's a drug crisis. It's a law enforcement crisis. And if you don't believe me, Go to these other states and see what's happening in their states. They're answering more calls. They're dealing more with situations of immigrants. Now, I'm not against immigrants. I'm an immigrant myself. You know, you want to come into this country? Come in through an entry point and do it right. And if, and if you come through there and, you, and you're granted to, to come in this country, a lot of people that want to come to this country want to accomplish the American dream, just like my parents did. But my friend, let me tell you something. They're putting drugs through that border. There are people that are coming into this country, not for the American dream, to, to destroy the American dream. Yeah. And law enforcement must be ready and must be prepared to meet those challenges because it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Mm. Okay. Next question. Next question is from Stephen underscore Anthony underscore. And he asks, why did you get into law enforcement and what advice do you have for a new person i guess he means a new officer i needed a job <laughs> <laughs> it's a good reason yeah. how I old were you when it, you started by the way 21. 21 i needed a job that paid me eighteen thousand dollars a year <laughs> <laughs> no listen i i came into law enforcement because I, i'll tell you i i had a I had an incredible experience uh, i remember we went to disney and and we're coming back and we had just gotten here from cuba i think my dad saved enough money to take me and my brother to disney we're coming back from disney and we get stopped by a trooper my dad's driving i was six years old and the trooper you know walks up to the car and you know my dad didn't speak a word of english and he didn't speak a word of spanish but i'm in the back seat and my dad goes oh hey mira lo que quiere policía <laughs> see what he wants yeah. so i translate and the guy ex accepted that he was like okay so i tra i translate uh, it's speeding da, 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 da. i don't remember if he gave him a ticket or a warning but it was that professional experience that, 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 that how the officer treated my dad how he treated me because I, I i was i was a little fearful you know yeah. i'm six years old my dad being stopped for speeding so it was that interaction of professionalism that when i decided to go into law enforcement 
I, I, I applied with the Florida High Patrol because I wanted to be a state trooper. But it's, you look, as a kid, I, I, thank God I never got in trouble. There were opportunities I could have got in trouble. Everybody. But, you know, I made it through. And that's why I'm a big believer that, you know, in today's society, we have to focus on not only tactical, but we also have to focus on preventing crime, de-escalation. And we need to focus on giving these kids an opportunity. Because some of these kids are going to make a mistake. And, you know, police officers should be role model, not drug dealers, okay? And I'd rather yeah. educate a child than incarcerate a child. Mm. And, and remember, and the, and the second half of that question is, what advice do you have for a new well, officer? Go ahead. L- look, if, you, if you're coming into law enforcement, it, it's, it, it's, it, it's, it's a profession that's going to require dedication. It's, it's a profession that's going to take time away from your family. All right, I, I've been through a divorce. It's, I, it's, I think just about every cop, a lot of cops go through divorce because, look, there are going to be times that you're not going to be there for Christmas. There's going to be times you're not going to be there for Thanksgiving. There's going to be times that you may not be there for your child's birthday, okay? My advice to them is to take their family serious. All right, when you get home, disconnect yourself from law enforcement. You know, find a hobby, whether you like to play golf, fish, because I think that my... Career in law enforcement and in politics and what I've done, I think that what has allowed me to have, I'm going to be 59 years old and have a sane mind, has been that I have been able to disconnect myself from situations that require a lot of stress. And believe me, when I was a city commissioner in the city of Miami, there were a lot of stressful situations. Yeah. Even in the Florida Health Patrol, there were stressful situations. I've been in situations that I thank the good Lord that I'm alive. I mean, I put my patrol car through a building in a chase in Miami, and, yeah. and I, it, trauma... I got taken to the trauma center, and they saved me at the trauma center because the trauma center saves lives. Yeah. Yeah, Take it from me. Shout out. Take Shout it out from me. Yeah. I mean, I, I, we used to go there when we used to work accidents, and they had the best surgeons from all over the, the forces yeah. uh, operating there. So, you know? so I, if, if, if it's a profession that you hearts in it, you're there to serve. You're there to treat people with respect. You're there to do what you need to do, and you need to go home, disconnect, and enjoy your take, family. Take off that police hat when you no, get absolutely. home and put on, that, cop, put on that family yeah, hat. You, like you can't be a cop 24 hours a day. You, you can't. All right. Okay. Well, that leads me into this question from... Did you read the name of that one, by the way? Yeah, Stephen okay. underscore Anthony underscore. Loyal Massey. Shout out to Loyal Massey. Thank you for the question. <laughs> they want to know, how mean are the officers on the highway patrol? Man, we're not mean. <laughs> Why are we mean? Because we, we do more traffic stop than any other agency, and we interact with more people, and I'm a big believer that everything starts with a traffic stop. Let me tell you my advice to you. Everything starts with a traffic stop as long as you treat that person with respect and dignity, and I've done that. I've always, everybody that I stopped, and I believe me, I've made plenty, plenty, plenty of traffic stops. I've always treated people like I was stopping my mother. Mm. with respect now there were people that you know push those buttons and they're disrespectful but at the end of the day you have discretion to give a warning or a ticket and then you use that discretion however way you want it you see the, the <laughs> myth is true <laughs> <laughs> so you thought you treat them like they're your mom so you would write your mom a ticket and I, that is true. I will not Breaking write my news. mom a ticket <laughs> And one FHP of the questions, listen, one will of the write questions, their mom's a ticket on Mother's Day. You said it. I got it. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm, just kidding. I'm joking, Joe. <laughs> but, but once again, it's a, it's about yeah. treating people with respect. Look, the Absolutely. Florida High Patrol, we're, we're as professional as any other yeah. department. I'm proud to be with the Florida High Patrol. I'm proud to have served the Florida High Patrol. But I can tell you that every department's out there. It's a professional the professional department. There, there, are, there are officers that have committed their lives. They're dedicated to this. And they are brave men and women. They go out there and risk their lives every day and you know what they should be compensated and they should be benefited and they should be respected for what they do as sheriff i will have their back i will stand beside him and i will be the best leader that i could be to earn their trust as we make miami dade sheriff's office the best sheriff's department in the nation love it shout all out right. to all my fhp peeps out there we even got some in the building right yeah. now. yeah this is oh Whoa, a little ding yeah, there. Ding. <laughs> that's that, was a, that was a text message from them. Like, <laughs> hey, that's but, the timer. Um, that's the timer. Okay, so what I want to get is now some closing, some closing statements. Because you got out of the hot seat. I think how was it? Pretty hot, a little hot. Nah, ah, it was all right. Not bad. We just boom. We got blue. Boom, boom. Back at it. Boom. Purple, purple, purple. There you go. 
Sorry, I don't, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the light guy. I'm the camera guy. I'm the audio Multitask. guy. Multitask. The talking also, guy. Also, afterwards, I clean the set. So I'm the really? janitor. I'm the maintenance guy. Yeah. <laughs> and I can change your oil afterwards. That's what, I, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. So any closing remarks you want to get at, get to us here? Yeah, Nick, first yeah. I want to thank you for this opportunity and, and, and my message to the voters of Miami-Dade County and, and police officers throughout the, the, the county is that, look, I, I, I am a cop's cop. Mm -hmm. I have dedicated my, my life to public service. Um, I think that I am a candidate who has a variety of experiences to be able to accomplish what I think that we all want, which is a great sheriff's office, um, a department that we could all be proud of to associate ourselves with, and a department that's going to provide the best service that we could provide. And I think that if we all work together, and I'm not saying just the sheriff's department, but all the municipalities, we could accomplish that. But once again, um, being an outsider, uh, I want to say that that could be a positive thing because I could come into the department with a clean slate. No one should fear that their job's in jeopardy. I could come in and listen to what the, the department has to offer and what direction I want to take the department. And I think that we could come to consensus to take this department and move it forward. And through it all, my uh, experience, my leadership experience, I think that if people do their homework and, and find out that the, the next sheriff, it's going to be someone who, who may not just specialize in one thing, like a union boss or an operational guy or an attorney or a investigator. It's going to be somebody who has a variety of experiences to be able to navigate this bureaucratic process that we're going to have to go through together to be able to accomplish the mission that we want to accomplish, which will be a smooth transition from a Miami-Dade Police Department into a Sheriff's Department without duplication of services, without wasting taxpayers' dollars, and above all, maintaining the dignity that this department has. I am committed to that, and I am committed to the officers of this department, and above all, I am committed to the residents and visitors of this county that as their sheriff, I can assure them that they're going to have the best public safety that they could have. Awesome. You got Sounds anything? Good. No, I mean, thanks for coming on, Nick. Thank you for having me. I'm honored to be the second best looking person in this chair. That's and, right. Uh, Shout out to my wife. Nick yeah. couldn't make it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Ralph, thanks for joining us and filling yeah, in. You got it. Nick, Joe. thanks. I look forward to seeing everyone Man. as I campaign throughout the county and you're running welcome. for sheriff. Sure, you're welcome county. back later on when you when you want to come back thank on. You, buddy. Mi casa, su casa. It. Thank you. All right. And thank you, brave men and women that serve our community. We're proud of you. This community supports you. And Joe Sanchez, your next sheriff of law and order, supports you.